Hey friends, fancy meeting you here. So today's project's gonna be a weird one. Okay, it's not gonna be that weird, but I kind of think it's gonna be weird. Today I'm building a project based on woodworking plans that I already have published on my website. I don't typically build the same project twice. I like to try to do things a little differently. So it is gonna be a tiny bit different, but hear me out. A few years ago, on my website, I built a cabinet and I published plans for it and it was way before I had a YouTube channel, so I did not have a video tutorial for it. But since publishing my cabinet, tons of people have asked for a video of the build. So today I'm going to try to recreate this build based on the plans that I published on my website. So I'm really hoping that they are still accurate. Now this is a super easy cabinet build made with one sheet of plywood and it is a great project for my beginner woodworkers. It's also a great project for my intermediate woodworkers because it is highly customizable. I'm really hoping that this build goes much smoother now that I've already built it once. But now that I have the plans, this build should go pretty smoothly. I hope I didn't just jinx myself. That being said, let's get started. This video is sponsored by my friends at Cricut. Okay, so like I mentioned in my introduction, this is a project that I have done before on my website, way before I ever even thought about having a YouTube channel. So you can find all of the materials and the tools as well as those principal plans on my website by clicking on the link below this video. Now, one of the things I absolutely love about this project is that it is made from one sheet of plywood. And yes, I know plywood is definitely not as cheap now as it was when I made this build, but it is still definitely cheaper to make this on my own than to purchase a similar cabinet online. And since this is a pretty simple cabinet build, it is highly customizable. I'm actually doing a completely different design on this cabinet than I did when I first built it, which is what makes this project so much fun. But jumping on into this build. So as you can see, the first thing I did was cut this plywood down into the sizes that I needed for my cabinet. And I did this using a circular saw and a track. And I also placed the plywood on top of a sheet of foam board insulation, just so I had something to cut against. And that way I would not cut into the floor of my shed shop. I worked really hard to put that floor down. I'd be really upset if I actually cut into it with my saw. Now, if you don't have a track saw like I do, you can use a circular saw with a guide, you can use a table saw, you can use a jigsaw, you can ask the associate at your local home improvement store to help you cut these pieces. The possibilities are pretty endless here because all of the cuts in this build are very simple. But after cutting down all of my pieces, I then decided to add pocket holes because for this project in particular, they were fast and easy. And once those pocket holes were screwed in the side pieces of the cabinet, I then moved on to edge banding. Let's talk about a little step in the process that I like to call a magic trick. So when working with plywood projects, you have two options. Actually, there are way more than two options, just like hypothetically for this particular demonstration, let's pretend you have only two options. Option number one, when working with plywood, you can keep the exposed plywood edge for a really cool stylistic look or you can make your piece of plywood look like a solid piece of hardwood, a super expensive solid piece of hardwood using edge banding. So what edge banding is, is edge banding is a veneered piece of wood, so a very thin piece of wood, and on the back is a sticky adhesive that is heat activated. So by ironing this on to your piece of wood, you can then make the plywood look like a solid piece of hardwood. So you really don't need anything fancy for this part of the project, just a regular old clothing iron and you can use a veneer trimmer or you can even use a regular razor blade and sand it all smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and do some magic with a clothing iron, which is about the only time I ever use a clothing iron in my entire life and make this piece of plywood look like a piece of solid birch wood. Let's do this. So quick spoiler alert for all of you friends out there watching this video, I actually ended up changing my mind on this project later in the process. Originally I was going to stain the entire cabinet, which is why I edge banded all of the edges to make the piece look like a solid piece of wood. And later I actually decided to instead paint the cabinet 
a really solid color. If I knew I was doing that from the beginning, I probably would have not used edge banding because edge banding and paint don't always behave well together. I probably would have just used joint compound and then sanded the joint compound smooth. But this is a pretty cool demonstration of how to make plywood look like solid wood, just using the edge banding, an iron, a razor, and some sandpaper. Moving on though, at this point, it was time to assemble the cabinet together. And like I mentioned earlier, I did use pocket hole joinery and wood glue for this particular project because it was very quick and easy. However, I do know that not everybody is a fan of using pocket holes. So my disclaimer here is that you can use whatever joinery makes your heart happy for your own cabinet, especially since it is a pretty basic box that's going to have doors on it. So you can use dowels, you can use just regular wood and screws and fill in the screw holes later. Whatever makes you happy, go for it. Also, quick note here, if you are confused as to where to put the pocket holes for this build, in my printable plans, I do have diagrams that are included that show exactly where I drill my pocket holes to help make that process easier. Once the cabinet was assembled, I sanded the entire thing to 220 grit and then stained it in this golden oak color. And I later changed my mind on this only because I wanted to go with a completely different design than the first time that I made this cabinet. But I'll talk about that in a little bit. I also last minute decided to fill in all of those exposed pocket holes using a tinted wood filler. This is an option. You can also use a dowel. They do make plugs for this, but I do like this method and it worked out really well, especially because I did end up painting the cabinet so you cannot see any of the pocket holes at all. Hi. Okay, so I'm gonna fit the doors to this cabinet and this is something I talk about a lot in cabinet making videos on my channel, but I'm not entirely sure I've actually showed the process. So I'm gonna show you how to fit super simple cabinet doors to a box like this one, which is the cabinet box. Check this out. So I have two pieces of plywood here and these pieces of plywood are not cut to size quite yet. In fact, they're cut a little larger than they need to be because what I like to do is take the pieces of plywood, add them to the build, and then make adjustments from there. So right now, these pieces of plywood are perfectly touching the ends. They are perfectly flush with the ends, which means that there's not gonna be enough of a gap here for them to open comfortably. So I'm gonna take enough off of both of these cabinets to make a slight gap here, about an eighth of an inch, and then you can't see it in the camera, but there is a little bit of a lip up here. So I'm just gonna take my pencil, mark where I need to trim, bring these over to the table saw, trim them down a bit, and then next time I place them on this part of the cabinet, they should fit perfectly. Let's do it. Now I mentioned this in all of my plans when I'm building and making and sharing cabinet processes, but I do like to cut my doors and even my drawers for when I'm doing drawers larger than they need to be at first and then trim them down to size once the entire box is built. This is just the best way to make sure that they fit perfectly and that is exactly what I did. Okay, time for edge banding. Oh, I lied, time for cutting the door handles and then edge banding, let's do it. The first time I made this cabinet years ago, I wanted to make little openings that you could fit your fingers into and then pull the cabinets open and they looked really cool and I just wanted to kind of mimic that look again. I did make these a little bigger than the last ones that I made, but it's the same exact concept. I just traced out my design using a speed square and then cut out that design using my jigsaw. I then repeated those same steps on the other door and then added edge banding to all of my exposed plywood edges. And then things got complicated. Okay, so sometimes I do this really awesome thing where I get like 50% done with a project and then later that night start thinking about that project and by the time I wake up the next morning, I've decided to completely go in a different direction. So that's what's happening with this project. Basically, today was supposed to be finishing touches day where I add the legs and the hardware and like the final design and put it all together, but last night I decided that I wanna change it up. So instead, I am going to sand down everything I already stained and sealed and painted a different color. And I picked a completely different design that I wanna put on the front of this cabinet than I was initially thinking about. So yeah, 
I can officially say I'm not 50% done with this project anymore. So good job, Sam. Lots to do. Let's get started. I just love making things more difficult, don't I? Please make me feel better and tell me that I'm not the only one who does this mid-project, but yes, I decided mid-project that I was going to go in a different direction. I sanded down everything that I had already stained and decided to paint the entire cabinet matte black. With the exception of the doors, which I stained in that golden oak color, you'll see that in a second. But once all of that dried, I then added some adjustable shelf pinholes so that I can add an adjustable shelf to the inside of the cabinet. And at this point, it was also time for me to add the legs. I also made sure to add a coat of poly to the entire cabinet before moving on to the next step, which was customizing it using my Cricut. So last time I built this cabinet, I made a really simple design using some painter's tape and a mix of wood stain as well as acrylic paint. But this time I wanted to use a really awesome stencil design that I actually purchased for a project a while back and did not use until this project today. So to do that, I partnered up with Cricut to use my Cricut Maker 3 as well as their Cricut Design Space app to make my stencil for this project. Now this app is awesome because it has tons of design inspiration, tutorials for how to use the Cricut machinery, as well as different types of designs and templates that you can use in your own projects. For this particular project though, I uploaded a stencil design that I had saved in my mix of stencils that I purchased from a seller on Etsy a while back. I will link that design for you if you want to check it out. And it was super simple to get it on into the program and cut it. I basically just uploaded it right from my desktop, resized it to the size that I needed, picked my machine, the material I was using, and then I was locked and loaded and ready to go. Now in the past, I was a stencil queen because I actually started woodworking with a small custom sign making business. And when I used to make those stencils, I would use a removable sticky back vinyl as well as a cutting mat. But lots of the new Cricut papers actually do not require a cutting mat at all. You can just load your supplies directly into the cutter and it will just cut without having to use a mat as a backer board. So while I typically use a vinyl roll to cut out my stencils, that does require transfer tape and I actually got my hands on some of this sticker cardstock from Cricut instead and decided to cut my stencil out on that. It has an adhesive back so I can just add the stencil directly to the cabinet without using any sort of transfer tape which basically cuts out the middleman and made making this stencil a very quick process. So once that stencil was cut, I unloaded it from my machine and I used a weeding tool to pull out all of the parts of the stencil that I actually wanted painted. I did have to repeat this step six different times to make six different stencils, but having the right tools makes a total difference in a project like this. And I was able to get all six stencils made within an hour. Now, once my stencils were cut, it was time to apply them to the cabinet. And because I used the sticker cardstock, I was able to peel that sticker or that stencil away from the backing and just apply it directly to the cabinet before painting. For this part of the project, I didn't use anything special. I did have some leftover white latex paint in my shop from my shed shop renovation and I decided to use that. I also decided to work one stencil at a time because I did find that as the cardstock got a little saturated, it was kind of a little bit harder to pull it away from the cabinet. So I tried to paint and pull away the stencil as soon as possible and that worked out really well. I also didn't obsess too much about these lines being perfect because I did want it to look like a hand painted piece of furniture. So of course the inner perfectionist in me was kind of mad because it took everything in my power to not go back and try to clean up every little line. But I'm glad that I did not because it turned out really cool. Honestly, mega props to the stencils that I made with my Cricut because I was able to get this entire cabinet painted in maybe 15 minutes, so score.
After painting the cabinet doors, it was time to let them dry overnight. And then the next day it was time to install them to the actual cabinet. So to do this, I used a cabinet hinge drilling jig. Again, listed everything on my website, but if you are gonna make cabinets, this thing is a total lifesaver. So definitely check it out. And once I had drilled the opening for the cabinet hinges, I then installed those hinges to the doors first before then installing the doors to the cabinet with a fun little trick that I like to use I'll show it to you in a second. So the reason I don't put the backs of my cabinet on until last or for this part exactly. I like to clamp my cabinet doors to my actual cabinet to check out the spacing and make sure the spacing works before drilling everything into place. Once everything is where it needs to be, I pre-drill holes for all of the hinges and then screw them to the cabinet. From there, I can make minor adjustments to the spacing from the hinges themselves, but this is seriously just a fail-proof way of installing doors in my workshop. And yes, happy dances are mandatory when you install them the right way on the first try. And with those doors attached, it was time to put the back of the cabinet onto the cabinet. And typically I do like to use quarter inch plywood here, but in order to save time and material and be able to fully use that sheet of plywood, I cut the back of this cabinet out using plywood and attached it to the back using pocket holes. And at this point, all that was left was adding the shelf. So I don't love building the same project twice, but I have to say this was definitely an exception to the rule. This has been a project that you have all been asking me for for the longest time and I'm so happy that I was able to make it all over again and do a video for it because I forgot how fun it is to go back to simpler projects and see how much I've learned since I built them the first time. I hope you all enjoyed this project. If so, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more projects in the near future. Have so much in store that I cannot wait to share friends. But until then, happy DIYing.